Hey guys, Cam here from PocketLint and Apple launched the first public beta of iOS 10 yesterday. And here's everything you need to know in an almost short, snappy form. Now first off, we have to state clearly this is a beta product. That means some things don't work properly yet, might be unreliable and could change by the time iOS 10 is launched officially later this year. Now the biggest update is undoubtedly to the Messages app. Apple updated it clearly to compete with the likes of Facebook Messenger and added features to make you want to be there and not just use it as a necessity. You can send messages with bubble effects or full screen effects by force touching the blue send button before sending. You can also react to individual messages as well as use the built-in iMessage apps to send stickers and scribble handwritten notes. You can even send music via iMessage to share what you're listening to with your friends. As well as all this, there's the invisible ink effect which is really cool and keeps messages hidden. There's also the rich link feature which shows a web page preview whenever you send a URL and you can get instant access to your camera or gallery and mark up those images. That's to say, scribble all over them. Like the Apple Watch, there's also digital touch for sending quick drawings or sending your heartbeat. The experience of using messages so far has been pretty good. It's way more fun than the old messages, but it does drain your battery if you use it too much. On a more general theme, the entire experience has been revamped so that you can now drag down spotlight search from pretty much anywhere. Swiping left from the lock screen goes straight into the camera, while swiping right gets you to your new Today View widgets. This view is accessible from the home screen too by swiping left to right. You can also raise the phone to wake it up when it's on standby. As well as these, Control Center has had a refresh which now includes two panels. One is for your music controls and the other is for your usual quick access toggles. The shortcuts on the bottom are force touchable or 3D touchable, so you can change the brightness level of your flashlight or set a preset timer, etc. Now even Notification Center is now 3D touchable, giving various options depending on which app the notification comes from. 3D Touch quick actions from the home screen apps have been given a revamp too, so weather gives you a current weather widget when you force touch it as well as quick actions. Likewise, Maps does something similar. Now speaking of apps, the entire app has had a refresh which shows the weather in the corner all the time. It also gives proactive suggestions and personalised locations as well as very quick directions. Once you've selected the location you want to go to, you can start navigation in an all new high contrast, easy to use navigation UI. What's more, you can quickly search for places to stop for food or petrol on your journey. Another new app is Photos, which has a neat memories feature for automatically collecting photos from specific places or times and puts them together in a short video with backing music. It'll also recognize people's faces and let you name them, grouping them together and also, again, creating automatic movies. Other changes include a new bedtime clock in the clock app which helps you to get into a healthy routine by setting up a daily sleep schedule. There's a new music app with a new layout and features like lyrics showing up while you're listening. There's a new news app too and a neat feature in mail which lets you toggle to see unread emails only. It's a nice way to unclutter the view. Now there were a couple of things that haven't worked for me so far like Siri is supposed to be able to send messages through third party apps as well as make VoIP calls and book rides etc. But none of my third party apps actually support that feature yet, so obviously we can't test it. Likewise, the new home app groups any HomeKit enabled products together so that you can control all your lights, your AC, your locks, any other HomeKit compatible connected product in your house, all from a very easy to use app. So that's just a quick overview of what's new. Stay tuned to pocketlint.com for more coverage of iOS 10 as it becomes closer to official release. I've been Cam, I'm at Cam Bunton on Twitter, and I will see you again soon.